Hi everybody, Waxfraud here, and welcome back to episode 2 of the Hardcore Let's Play series. We are starting the episode right outside of our very first house in this series, and we have plenty more to make. The goal of this episode is actually not to take care of myself, but to get some housing for the villagers, because, you know, I mean, I have a house, but the villagers don't have anything. The only housing that we've made so far is actually this small dirt hut that we have a mending villager in, and our silk touch villager in. We are going to completely revamp this village over here, just so we can look at it from our house with a little bit of inspiration. I am absolutely not joking when I tell you on stream it took me only one try to get the mending book. It took me about 50 tries to get the silk touch book, but actually my first try I got the mending book. But we did just buy our first mending book and our first silk touch book right now. Let's move back inside real quick. I have a small amount of enchanting and a small amount of interior decoration that I would like to show you guys that we've done so far. The first floor is not entirely done yet because we don't have a lot of the decoration materials that I'd like to use, like candles, glow berries, and amethyst, but we'll be getting a lot of that. But we did what we could so far with the materials that we have, and I am liking this a lot. I cannot wait for the decorated pots to have some pottery sherds in them. Tried experimenting with a couple different block types for what we have so far, and I've never used dripstone as pillars that go from the ceiling to the floor on an interior part of the decoration, and I love that. Just realizing right now that the lighting is now getting oxidized. I should get some waxed copper, but that means getting some honey, and that actually means going to find a beehive. This guy's taking a liking to the house, which I'm pretty cool with. I'd like more villagers to come move in here, but uh, let's go to the third floor real quick. Don't mind the stair location. I don't know if this is going to be permanent, and uh, I, I think the enchantment setup is going to be up here, but I don't know if I'm going to have an, a more open concept for this flooring over here. Let's place down our very first anvil, and let's get this Fortune 3 pickaxe with the mending book in it. We have an unenchanted hoe, and you know what? Let's just drop a low level on it. Let's just get efficiency one real quick, just so I can see what the next enchantments are going to be. Honestly, efficiency four on the shovel right now does sound pretty nice. Also, a brand new axe with unbreaking three on it with silk touch. Nice, not too bad. And since we have the silk touch book right here, I'm just going to throw it onto an unassuming pickaxe, and now we are set to go. We can finally gather a bunch of blocks that we weren't able to before. This guy's jumping for joy. I'm going to follow him outside, and we've been doing a little bit more decoration to the interior here as well. The second floor actually has a small balcony that looks over into here where the, the polar bears and the horses are currently calling this home, but uh, pretty soon they'll be moved outside. We have way too much stuff to do in this series. There's too much going on. I collected way too many mobs in the first episode, and now they all need homes. But before any of those guys can get homes, we gotta house all of these villagers. This village over here is starting to look a little bit plain compared to everything that we've been making over here. There's a lot of landscaping we need to do as well. I kind of want to flatten out this area so I can make a nice looking wall. And these guys have been breeding. It looks like we have about 10 villagers over here, so we have a solid village. We can hook up a security wall closer to this mountain that wraps all the way over closer to these ice spikes. Well, maybe not that big, but this is a pretty big sized village. It has two bells right here, so technically it's two villages. All of these buildings are about to be replaced, and, and what are you doing up there, dude? This is absolutely not allowed, but I'm, I'm gonna walk away and pretend like I saw nothing. So just for the moment, the two librarians that I have in here, they're gonna just remain in the dirt enclosure. I don't want them to perish. I had a mason that was chilling in the house, and he's gone now. I think a drown got him sometime when I was gone, but uh, yeah, I don't want that to happen to these guys, so they're just gonna stay in the dirt enclosure until I have more houses for them. And everything over here is getting so loud. Time for y'all to go for a second. Actually, first, let's make more cows real quick. Let's get rid of all of the wheat that we have on us. And now that we have that gone, let's get some leather. This guy's coming to hang out with his friends. Sir, you can't get in the dirt enclosure. You actually have a house. Actually, he's like, dude, you just built me a house right here. Looks like we can get Unbreaking 3 on a shovel right here, and that's just about it. You know what? We can combine that with our Efficiency 4. Just gotta level up a little bit more here. Really trying to get a nice enchantment on this sword. We do have a Sharpness 4 sword already, but we need something just a little bit more than that. So let's drop this in. Unbreaking 3 and Sharpness 3. Okay. This cat can't figure out how to get to the bed. It's so funny. I have a bed right under the stairs, but for some reason it thinks it's just on the stairs. But, you know, that's not the bed, dude. But, guys, by the way, you did actually name this cat, and Rox was the name you chose. We're going to name this cat. I haven't found any name tags yet, but we're going to name this cat Rox. I saw the name Rox in the comment section at least 20 times. Now, if you guys want to name this puppy right here, let me know. Actually, you know what? Let's give this guy a blue collar real quick, but just, just to make him a little different. As soon as we get a name tag, Rox is the first guy that's going to get named. We also have Paul and Pablo, the polar bears outside. These guys are going to get named as well. But now the puppy. If you guys have any name suggestions, definitely leave them in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear them. 
Before I leave, I also wanted to show you guys, we have a button right here on the ground for a good reason. If I leave right here, there's note blocks on the ground, so you hear a doorbell every single time I open the door and walk in and walk out. At first, I thought this was pretty cool, you know, we have an alarm kind of sound every time a villager or somebody walks in the house, but I don't know, it just gets a little old really fast, so I put a button right here to stop that. Now it's time to buy those books. We have some emeralds to buy them with, but uh, these books are kind of expensive since we haven't zombified and cured any of them yet. And this guy's stuck in the boat. Sorry about that, dude. But, yeah, I mean, we have a silk touch book available for 11 emeralds, and our mending book is available for 20, which is not that great. Also, if we hop over to the village, we do have a couple more librarians that are set up. But these guys have a couple different books that we're trading. I'm actually just going to hop over here into this little jail. So this is a very expensive trade. Sharpness 5 and Efficiency 5 are usually pretty expensive, but Efficiency 4 was the one that I settled for because, I mean, it was half the price, and I couldn't find Efficiency 5. We can just combine these books for now, and we will get an Efficiency 5 book later, but the Efficiency 5 book at first was 64 emeralds, and I was like, no way. So 27 emeralds, I guess we'll just do it with a combination of both of these books. Also, in this side of the village, we do have a villager that is now selling us Feather Falling 4. I do not want to fall from really high up and take any fall damage to, to the point where I uh, perish, and so, yeah, that, I thought that was a good idea. 17 emeralds is not that great for the trade though so as you can see there's a trend here everything's very expensive so we could either get them zombified and cured which might take a while or we could just make a mini raid farm and you know just get hero of the village which is definitely the next step in the plan for today's episode but before we leave the village area there's a couple of beehives over here that i wanted to grab now that we have a silk touch pickaxe you are coming with actually you know what let's just take this tree out and we have beehive number two right here silk touch is amazing all we need is a couple campfires to place below the beehives, and we can start harvesting some honey. I'm just going to break this right here, and break this right here, and you know what? We will bring this out, this out, and I'm going to put the bee nest on top of both of those. Then we can use the shears and get ourselves some honey. Now we can use some candles to help with our interior decoration, but I haven't even run into any spiders yet. I definitely need some string. Luckily, there are other uses for the honeycombs. We can apply them to the oxidized copper. Well, or just regular copper blocks, I guess. The oxidized copper in the ceiling, I did want it to just be regular copper. So let's take all that down. We're going to wax this real quick and wax that real quick. I think this is the first time I've got that wax on achievement. I have never used the waxed copper before. But now it's going to be shiny. We can get the lantern hung right there. We'll get the acacia signs on all four sides. And there we go, that looks much more clean. We're gonna use the oxidized copper for something else later on. I have yet to build anything really with copper in my hardcore series, so I really am looking forward to doing that. For some reason, Rox just won't go to the bed or chill on any floor really, he just wants to hang out on the stairs. So I'm off to the flower forest real fast. I was actually lucky enough to find a nice surprise. So there's a village right next to the flower forest and there's also a beehive right here that I can grab now, let's go. But we're going to go to that village next to the flower forest and steal a villager instead of all of his items this time. We're going to go past this first village. This one's still a little bit too far away. There we go. I see poppies, tulips. Okay, there's the sunflower forest. Go right past the flowers. And on the other side of the hill, we should... Oh, there's a pathway. And here we go. We have our villagers. I'm going to have to take one of you guys. Which one of y'all wants to get in the boat? Actually, I see a guy down here without a job. Let's just put you in the boat right here. He just walked the other direction. Okay, how about you get in the boat then? All right, I'm out of here with you, sir. Let's go. Now, I'm going to try to get us as close as possible to where this raid farm setup is going to be. And actually, there's another beehive right here I should take before I forget it. Did I see a bee fly away from it? Yep, there was a bee that just flew back in. I heard him, and we're taking his home. That horse is looking majestic up there. Slowly making our way across the field into that savanna biome, and we probably should get rid of some of that creeper grass. We are some speed racers. These guys probably can't even see us right now. We're going so fast. Pass through the flower forest just a little bit longer, and we're almost in the pond. And if you can look to my right just a little bit, you might see something special. We have a pillager outpost that we had found all the way out here right next to the flower farm. If I had just actually looked to my left just even a little bit in last episode, I, I would have seen this thing. But uh, nope, I didn't look to my left at all, and this thing went unnoticed. The sunset's looking gorgeous as usual, and I actually have yet to go into the building. I want to get the goat horn that's probably in there. Now, in order for this to work, I need to get this guy closer to the composter. And what do you see? Are you over here, bud? What, what, are, those, uh, what are those green dots? He's doing it. It's working so far. I really hope he doesn't fall into the trap. I hope he just goes straight into the glass cube. One step, two step, three step. Oh, he's all the way in. Okay, so we are going to lock you in right here, bud. You are now a farmer. Wait, where are you going? No, 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 no. 
Well, never mind. He's gone. And actually, wait, wait, do not go in here. I'm going to turn all of these trapdoors like this so that guy doesn't even think about walking over them. And now I'm getting shot from behind. What? Do you, you know what? You're going in. Get yeeted. If you guys haven't seen this design before, it's basically just four corners of water sliding into the middle to send every mob that goes down. Now, this guy's just getting further and further away. Now he's coming back slowly. You know what? Just get away from... No, no, no. Don't go in there. Okay. Please, sir. Just get in the boat. This guy is just living on the edge. I, why? Why are you doing this right now? Please get out of there. Maybe he'll get into the boat. Yes, there we go. Okay, over here we go. Dude, this is... Why are you being like this? Villagers are always causing trouble. Break the axe, and he has no way to get out. I'm gonna break this glass, and... Oh, wait, no, 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 sir. Uh, why does he want to escape? Just not gonna allow that. Okay, he has no way to escape, so here's what we're gonna do. He's in, and now you're done. Place a dirt right there, and boom, 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 boom. You are now locked and loaded. And let's break everything down real quick. Now we can just kill a captain and get a raid started. Reflip all these guys real fast. We already got a guy following me right here, but you are not a captain. I'm looking for a captain. You are also not a captain. Actually, you know what? Let's just run inside real quick. Where is the front door? It's not here. Where's the front door, please? Is it on the other side? Looks like it's on the complete other side. Okay, boom, 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 and let's see what's in here. Well, what do you know? Nobody's even spawning in here. Well, this is kind of great. No one's even spawning in here. Got a bottle of enchanting, and we have a goat horn. I'm taking this whole chest, and let's see what the goat horn sounds like. Absolutely beautiful. We do have a captain. Let's go. Okay, so I will just run down here real quick, and let's just go boom. There's a lot of dudes out here. Hold on, we just need to go boom. All right, so we just got voluntary exile. Let's run all the way over to the farm, and pretty soon a raid is going to start because we have a villager right here. As quickly as I can, I'm going to get that closed up, and the raid should be starting. I finally have a little bit of an area where I can watch it from. Looks like they're going to be falling in one by one. There goes one. Is this guy just going to fall right in? And there he goes. Looks like we got one guy that's having a hard time finding his way over, and he's gone. Break these right here and right here. That way I can creep in just a wee bit closer and boom. We will make this room look much nicer right now. It's still just a bunch of stone and granite on the walls, but I just wanted to make sure it works, which it seems like it does, but I am actually going to move everything down. Now we have it moved down about three more blocks and it seems like more pillagers are being added to the raid. The numbers went right back up. Well, all right, we got our first Ravager over here, and everyone's about to fall in, and you might notice that we have just moved a little bit. I did spend, and with an arrow in my chest, I spent a little bit of time on stream moving everything from over there to over here. We needed to move about 50 blocks over to the west, or actually, this is the east over here. I did not know that if you build your raid farm a little bit too close to the pillager outpost, it's just going to infinitely spawn raiders in over and over and over again. It will never end. We just need this witch and this captain to fall. Actually, I don't know if the Ravager took fall damage all the way down. Geronimo! There we go. Okay, so... Yeah, it seems like he's still right here. Sorry, buddy. I should have made this drop just a little bit farther for you. Dude, these guys have so much health. Okay, we got that guy in, and we got some banners already. Only one left. Finally about to move on to the fourth round, and there he goes. Oh, and there's a spider. I still need to kill a spider. We need string. There's so many things that we can craft with string. There's the horn, and here comes the fleet. What's going on, everybody? Oh my god, there's a bunch of witches this time. It'd be cool if the raids were, like, completely different mobs every time. Like, if there was an entire raid of only witches, that'd be terrifying. And, of course, it's raining. It is always raining. This guy has no idea that he's walking right on top of me. And see ya. I'll just wait down here for a second, let them all fall in, and okay, there goes the Ravager. And, oh, wait, we do have a totem. I am actually putting this on right now. Let's go. I still haven't seen an evoker. I just want to lay my eyes on one. The raid's about to begin Oh, right over there. And oh, there's an evoker riding a ravager right now. Dude, these evokers are so fast. There's two of them sprinting right at me. This would be terrifying if I was just standing right here. Without the glass barrier, I am so vulnerable. I'm going to hop down. I see a ravager, maybe two of them that we have to take down. Another totem. I'm going to take this. And it looks like we have another one. I'm just going to keep on taking all these. Okay. Oh, we got it. That's Hero of the Village right there. Okay. So now we have, uh, okay, there's another totem. Let's take this right here. And we have some glowstone dust. I will be back for a lot of these items. I'm just going to put them in here for now. I'm taking these saddles back home. I'm taking all the totems back home. We did it. 
And again, I will be coming back here. I'm going to leave this bed here for now, but I'm going to come back and make all of this look much nicer. I also need to build a minecart transport system that's going to take me all the way out here. In case you guys are wondering how much work it took to get everything moved, we had the first hole right here. I just filled it all in, and then if we walk all the way back over to the pond, I had to refill it all the way back up with the dirt that we had taken out over here, and almost half of all of the dirt that we took back at the first house. And I put a grid in the pond because I didn't know if stuff was going to spawn in the raid all the way out here in the flower forest. So I figured, you know what? Here's a bridge for them to run all the way across. We will be back, buddy. Thank you for the totem. I really appreciate your hard work. That minecart transport system will be nice to come back here anyways because then I can come back here and bone meal the ground frequently when I run out of tulips. I'm thinking next time the night falls, I'm probably going to have to let it remain nighttime for a little bit because I need to have a run-in with a few spiders. I need some string. Also, now that we have some totems, I have a little bit more confidence to get into those lush caves that we found last episode. Barely made it in time, the sun's going down, home sweet home. Pretty soon this village is going to be looking like home sweet home for all these guys as well. It's nice to see that all the cows are still here, and I think we have way too many sheep. First thing I'm doing as I get home is making a nice little barrel here for all of the totems. I'm placing them all, actually you know what, we're keeping one on me at all times, but now we have a place to put them. And since night has fallen, it is time for us to go outside and hopefully we can find some spiders. And as soon as I get feather falling on these boots, I will be heading to the lush cave to grab some glow berries and drip leaves and pretty much everything else I can grab down there. I was thinking maybe grab some extra iron so we could bring some extra buckets because you know there's going to be some axolotls down there. On my way there, I'm going to see if I can get some cheap trades real quick. Okay, perfect. I'll sell the clay. And if we go over here, what's our mending book looking like? That's okay, that's not a mending book. Accidentally just purchased some bookshelves. Was not trying to do that, so let's hop back over and get it done right this time. If we head over to both of you right here, you should be able to sell me. All right, that is a silk touch book, and we have a mending book. Hero of the Village is absolutely amazing. It's really saving my life right now since we don't have everything zombified and cured yet. Might as well get some silk touch up in on this shovel. Okay, and now we can finally head out towards that lush cave. We're gonna have to say goodbye to our home for a little bit and go on one more adventure. And of course, I forgot a bed, so I'm gonna take a couple of these sheep here, thank you. Always forgetting at least one thing, and boom, we are in the water. Okay, it should be right across this ocean. Might as well pick up some of this kelp. We don't really have any yet back home, so now we can plant some. And I do see some spruce trees over here, so we're getting pretty close. Well, here's the valley that we had to go to to get to that village back there, but I actually just see an azalea tree right here right away, so we might as well just start digging down from right here. I'm going to take these leaves back home. We'll take all the oak down, and you know, we should probably start getting this place a little lit up. I do not want any surprises from any creepers while we're digging straight down. Ooh, I also just remembered, now that we have Silk Touch on our shovel, we can start to take home some of this podzel. I'm gonna start using podzel to pot some plants on the side of the houses. Alright, here goes nothing. Let's see, uh, hopefully that's not too dangerous down here. Alright, and right away we seem to have just hit a giant opening in an underwater cave. Let's, uh, let's explore real quick. Okay, actually, I see some moss. This place is massive, and there are drowned everywhere down here. We got a baby drowned following me. I should just... I'm gonna go back to my cave real quick. Okay, so if we go over here on top of the moss and actually just break one, I bet we'll be able to see through the ceiling, and there it is. And if I'm not mistaken, we got a nice little axolotl. Ooh, a couple of them right down here. Sir, do you want to be my friend? There we go. Oh, and we got a spore blossom right up here. Let's go. Okay, we hit the jackpot immediately. I'll take this right here. You're going in the starter house. Okay, and the luck just does not run out. We just found a nice little amethyst geode right here. I am very happy to have brought the silk touch pickaxe because now I can get my first little amethyst right here. Let's go. Now the interior decoration is finally going to start taking off. I'll be taking all the drip leaves home, and I think these small guys right here, you might have to silk touch them. Never mind, I think you just need to shears them. I hope there's more. Yep, okay, there's one right here. Do I use the shears? I do. Ooh, this guy's got a Nautilus shell. I will happily take that out of your hands. Thank you very much. And, okay, my inventory is full. That's the reason I was actually coming back up here anyways. I will be back for that Nautilus shell. Where did it go? It's right here. Actually, let's just get rid of the diorite. Sorry, diorite. Drop all the goodies off in the boat, and then we head back down. Okay, it's actually not often that I really care about any of these tropical fish, but this purple and black one right here, I like this one a lot, so I'm taking this guy home. And I guess you can get a tactical fishing advancement if you do that. We've pretty much already explored this area. Let's go. There's going to be some more moss down here we can hit up. Oh, and there's a free axolotl. Let's go. I'm going to pick this guy up right here. And we have two friends now. Okay, this one actually looks like it goes much, much deeper. 
slowly floating down. It doesn't look too dangerous down here. Let's just, uh, let's hop down and start torching the place up a bit. We've definitely found a much larger cave system, and yep, there's a creeper. But we did find another axolotl. I will take you, sir. And up here looks like another handy-dandy spore blossom. There's still particles, though, so there's gotta be one hanging around over here. There it is. I was gonna say this guy's ruining my peaceful adventure, but, uh, he's just kinda stuck right there on the drip leaf, so easy fight right now, dude. Doesn't seem like it'd be too dangerous down here. Okay, there's diamonds down here, too. But the real gold prize are these spore blossoms. I can hear and... Yep, now I see another axolotl. There you are. Oh, and that's a skeleton. Please, sir, leave me alone. I just want some axolotls. Okay, that's a couple arrows in a row. I'm just... You know what? And a baby zombie. Please, sir, how about you just leave me alone, too? This is... Uh, you know what? This is starting to become not so peaceful. And now you're in the water. Look at him taking a bath. See you later, dude. Be gone. And I don't even know how I skipped over this guy, but we have another one. Maybe he just spawned in right now, but we have five axolotls that we picked up so far. I think we are A-OK -okay on this trip. We can come back to de- Oh, there's another one! We can definitely come back to get more, but since there are creepers here right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and get out of here, because that guy can see me. Let's swim on back to the cave and climb back up to the boat. Let's go home and bring our decorations back. Okay, we have fresh air. That smells really good. And you know what? Actually, I'm gonna take some of this mossy cobblestone before I get back. I don't have too many vines yet to try to combine this with regular cobblestone, so might as well just mine this out while we can. Also ferns, I love ferns, can never forget about ferns. Back home we go, this is exciting. Not only are we going to use all of these decorations on our starter mansion, but we are going to incorporate these into the custom village that we're making. I am sprinting back to the first floor right now because I just absolutely cannot wait to get these glow berries in instead of the ladders into the corner. This is just going to make the room pop so much more. Let's actually climb up here to the second floor real fast, and we'll put the glow berries right there and right there. Bone meal them to make sure they're lighting up the place. We can now start to take out some torches gradually, and these are going to fall down to the bottom, so we do not need these ladders anymore to have a spore blossom too. Let's get one right on the front porch right when we walk in so we have these particles always. And I'm going to take this right here too. Soon we will have a home for all the axolotls, but I'm just going to put them in a barrel for now. Also, very big moment. We can finally add some drip leaves to the side of the house. These always make everything look much nicer back here. Also, we have our first spider right here. Hopefully, dude, you can give me some string. I have yet to pick up any string, and you have none. There's a witch and a creeper right here. Okay, well, there's bound to be some more spiders in this field. And we have another spider. Okay, let's go. Sir, I'll see you later. No string left, though. Okay, hold on. We're gonna have to do some work for this. I hear a spider. Oh, he's right behind me. Are there any creepers around? I'm actually just gonna... Hold on. I'm gonna lure these spiders over to the water, because I... Th there's just too many creepers. Oh my god, there's like five spiders right here. One, two, three... Oh, string! Let's go! Never mind, it was just a spider eye. Dude, alright, come on. One string here. Please give me strings. Statistically, you have to- Okay, there's two strings and creeper. You know what? I don't have any gunpowder yet. If I can get a gunpowder, that'd be cool. And you're gone. Gunpowder, got it. We got a zombie here now. Boom, you're gone. Now after today, we got a bunch of things we can craft. We have a beehive over here. We can make some scaffolding for some decoration. Oh, wait, hold on. We need a string, not a honeycomb. And then we can use the honeycomb to finally start making some candles. Turn the candle red real quick, and I'm going to put it on the upside down copper rod. There we go. Not too bad. Let's grab a flint and steel real quick and light this guy up. Okay, it's finally, it's about time we got some candles up in this place. Also, we finally have enough iron to make a sufficient amount of iron trap doors, which I'm going to use for the top of these little tables over here, and I immediately am placing them in the wrong spot. But we have a desk in the corner of each side of the room, and I figured using some iron trap doors would look good next to the andesite. I love that we're just slowly adding every single type of block in here. Let's take out this lectern real fast, and oh, hold on, we got a doorbell we need to fix. Let's put the scaffolding right there and a beehive right there. Does the doorbell continue? Nope, it's done. Look at that. It's about time we head over to the village to give it a little bit of a revamp, and we can fall all the way down without worrying about taking too much fall damage because of feather falling. We absolutely cannot stop over here without taking a little bit- Oh my god, I already got some steak. We cannot stop without taking some of these cows out because it's getting way too loud over here. Bing, and bang, and boom, and bop. Well, now we have to do the scary part and jump in with the cows and grab all of the steak and all the leather. What have we gotten ourselves into? 
Let's see if I can make my way out of here. Larry. Excuse me, there we go. Okay, there we go. All right, let's go back to the village. What's up, Nitwit? How you doing? I'm going to flatten out a couple of areas in. Okay, we got to fill this area in right here. This has got to go. We're going to build a barrier wall, but first we got to make the landscape seem a little bit more smooth. So let's start taking out any... Ooh, that efficiency is very nice. Got silk touch on here too, so I'm grabbing the grass now. Man, we are moving along nicely in this game. Let's uh, let's start smoothing the place out just a bit. I want to keep a lot of the natural landscape, but places like this, you know, let's just let's fill this in. We'll make a nice gradual incline that goes up to these upper buildings. And I'm glad this nitwit's here because I will be getting a nitwit sanctuary going. I've always wanted a nitwit sanctuary, and it's about time we get one going. First, we'll have to make a villager breeder, and then we'll have to get as many nitwits as we possibly can. See, now, over here is looking way better already. I'm going to take this tree out. Eventually, we're going to get some custom trees in. By next episode, I'm going to start working on getting a lot of custom trees. Like, these cherry trees are probably going to be the first ones that I work on. Then we'll slowly move them over into this village. But uh, right now, I should probably get some torches out because these iron golems are starting to get a little beat up. This guy looking brand new, though. I probably also took some torches out when I was taking out some of this grass over here. But for now, we're just going to torch everything up. Oh, we got some spiders. Okay, I'll take the string. Get over here, buddy. And boom. And oh my god, he's fast. Okay, we got more spiders right here. Everybody come. Oh my god, these guys are really fast. Dude, this is insane. How is everybody enchanted all of a sudden? That's another reason why we got to light everything up out here. Also, these creepers out here, man. These guys got to go. They think they run the house, but uh, we're going to build a wall. Donkey is just still chilling here. Way to go, dude. Thank you for staying here. I haven't really brought him back over the house like I said I was going to, but I'm going to bring him down one level. Hopefully, he just stays chilling. And I kind of hate to do it, but uh, in order to keep the land a little bit smooth over here, we're going to have to take down this animal pen. I'm sorry, Donkey, but uh, we'll, we'll get an animal pen going pretty soon. This guy is looking beat up. We're about to make this wall just for you, dude. We've collected a lot of the andesite stone and the oak, so I figured I'm going to use that for a lot of the wall. This place is a lot easier to be able to hop through, and I'll get some slabs so that it's easier to walk through as well so we don't have to hop up all these dirt blocks. But I'm going to start on the back side of the village because it seems like all of these houses are just in one straight line. I'm going to set up shop right here, bring a lot of the oak logs out, and okay, so we're going to start by just probably measuring out a wall with a lot of the stone bricks. Some of the wall is going to be in the water, which is pretty cool. It's going to add a nice little element to the village. We can have a little pond in here. I'm going to do my best to leave as much of the natural elements in here as I can. This guy is on the city perimeter. I'm, I might be taking a right turn here, and you are outside the wall. Let's start back up the hill a little bit and start working some of the oak logs in. Jump down, strip these real quick. I'm actually going to have to probably make a stone axe. We'll get these stripped here. We're going to get some oak slabs in between them, and let's get a spruce fence with a little lantern hanging. Not looking too bad so far. Let's actually start working some more of the stone in here. It looks like me landscaping over here has brought the donkey on the other side of the bamboo. I'm sorry, dude. He, do he doesn't look as happy as he once was. You will soon have a home. Dude, get off the wall. You don't want to be on the other side of the wall when this thing gets built up. This guy truly is a nitwit. Okay, so now for a small part of some andesite and some stone to protrude a little bit. We're gonna have three by three towers in between three spaced out logs of oak here. And actually, let's put some oak slabs right here again. We're gonna keep the lighting going all the way around. This is gonna need a lot of lanterns. Wall's not looking too bad, but it is missing a little bit of color. Oh my god, I can't even build the wall without it raining. It is always raining. Luckily, the sun's about to go down. Also, that's pretty cool right there. The sun rays peeking through even though there's a rainstorm right now. I'm about to sleep and then the rainbow's gonna come out. Then we can decorate. The rain is gone and the rainbow is out. Oh, that's perfect. So let's hop around the wall here. There's a couple things that I'd like to add. Let's get some of these flower pots in with the acacia saplings. We'll get this repeated every time. We're going to need to get ourselves maybe 50 more decorated pots. But then in between all of the oak logs, let's get some moss in here for an extra green color with some dark oak trap doors to hold it in. Then once these sweet berries are fully grown, that's going to add some extra spice here too. That already added so much. Now we just need to keep getting everything replicated, and that's nothing that a Twitch stream can't handle. Couple of berry bushes here around the deep slate corner tower, and we got some lanterns to throw in. Decided that, oh man, the nitwit looks like he's trying to leave. Let's not even allow him. No way, dude. I'm gonna build these deep slate towers up a lot. Also, I think I might do a little bit of landscaping with this side over here because it drops off just way too harsh. 
I think I accidentally locked this guy outside. I could let him through. We could just have an opening through the tower real quick, and I actually should probably get a light in here in case something spawns. I'm gonna start plugging in a little bit of the water, also covering up this old path here, as this is just not gonna be part of the new village. I can hear some rushing water. We just need to take out all that sound and build up. I'm thinking maybe just about right here, only about three or four blocks up from where we are right now. Also, every once in a while, it's nice to fill in some of this with the moss. You can bone meal it up. It starts to look much nicer around here. Gotta make sure we have this backside lit up as well. Let's build up here a little bit. I want to get a better look. Okay, so not looking too bad. I'm gonna make these deep slate towers just a little taller. But it's nice to finally see this place a little fortified. Now, before we start working on any specific buildings, I just want to make sure all of these towers on the corners are tall enough. Let's make sure this guy's tall enough right here, and we'll come back to him eventually. I'm thinking these smaller guys over here we need to work on. Yeah, like an iron golem just climbed on- this is- yeah, you know it's short when the iron golems can climb right on him. Couple of bings, couple of bangs, couple of booms, couple of bops. So this tower right here, unfortunately, is being obstructed by the old cleric tower, and I thought it might be cool if the cleric tower was a part of the wall, just to show a little bit of history here, but I kind of want to finish the wall. So, this guy's probably gonna have to go, let's just make this guy a little bit taller. That should finish this up right here, and we'll start taking the cleric tower down. I've never made a custom mini cleric tower before, so I'm kind of excited to tackle that project. I'll be sure to replace this cobblestone ladder tower in the next build. Is this guy trying to be a cleric right now? Dude, now is not the time. I built out just a little bit of the dirt to hang out over to the tower here, because I didn't want to build all the way down, like 50 blocks all the way into this hole. But I am going to build a gate, actually, all the way down here. If I open this up just a moment, I might take out some of this berry on the other side. I'm going to turn this into a door so that we can use this as a dock. But right now, I am going to leave that closed so that no villagers try to escape. Also, this donkey, you're not escaping, bud. I'd like to have a small pond in this area, but I don't think all of this needs to be water, so we'll probably bring a little bit of moss over here. Just make this pond area a little bit more circular. And this whole area of water, we're just going to fill it in, get some grass mixed in with some moss. The wall has been replaced, we have towers up in all of the corners, and we will make these gates, but first I think we need to get some better enclosures for all the villagers. It's time to make some custom villager houses. We have the city center right here, but I was thinking, let's slide past this iron golem, and what are you doing over in the pond, buddy? Yeah, this farmer's lost, he needs a little bit more space over here to uh, just live and work comfortably, so let's start with the farmer's house. This wasn't originally the farmer's house, but you know, now it's going to be. First things first, let's take out the roof and let's take out the frame. I like the oak for the roof, but we should wrap it with deep slate or stone and all of the oak logs here, let's replace them with some stripped spruce or maybe some dark oak. I'll try to leave the terracotta in, but let's work the spruce logs into the frame. Start stripping all the spruce. We're going to use deep slate stairs and slabs on the perimeter of the roof. So now we have a completely new style for the roof, and okay, that actually does work a little bit. We'll bring a little bit of an awning out for some shade, and we gotta get the rest of these pillars stripped. Take these oak stairs out, and raise the roof by just one level. And we can make an awning down here starting right now. Okay, and I misplaced one, but we, we actually might not even bring it over that far, but I'm going to just bring it out about four or five for now. This will actually make the path seem a little bit more immersive, because it's going to go right over. I'm glad we have silk touch now, we can just grab those anytime, and this is getting loud, let's take all these out. Get some trap doors here, and some trap doors there. This iron golem's trying to get in the way here, but we'll turn the front porch into some stone bricks, and we'll get some deep slate to connect onto the roof, and that's not in the right spot. We'll even slap a double door down. I have yet to use any dripstone blocks, so I figured let's use it for the ceiling in these little builds. We're gonna hook up some moss on the back side, cover that up with some dark oak trap doors like we did on the outside walls. Now we have a little bit of a flower bed on the back and around the sides. Can never use too many decorated pots. Get a fence with a lantern under it, and you know what, let's get a decorated pot under it. Now we just need some greenery on the top, and if we go down to the bottom, we can slap some greenery on the bottom here too. I decided I wanted to switch these fences over to some jungle wood, get the gates up there. Okay, that's a little bit more colorful, let's get this moved over from left to right. Put a spore blossom up that we found earlier. We're going to move this bed from outside to inside, and we'll slap this guy down right about here. We'll get the interior decorated, but uh, let's just take a quick step back, and for right now, this seems like a house that we could easily duplicate. Let's quickly fix the roof real quick. I just wanted to add the rest of these trap doors. 
Got a few barrels, maybe a pumpkin up here, and you know what? Actually, let's get some chains on the side with some azaleas hanging. This is just going to add a little bit of extra spice. And while I'm thinking about it, let's just add a little bit of extra interior decoration. I was about to walk away and start duplicating, and then I'm, I just I just kept thinking of more things to add. Crafting table up top. Okay, now it feels much cozier in here. Some full-sized azaleas on the side to wrap it up. What are we looking like if we zoom in near the south gate? Let's hop up just a couple blocks here, and... Okay, you know what? I like this house. Now we can duplicate it. And duplicated, they have been on a Twitch stream. We actually built four brand new houses. And thank you guys for joining. If you did, it is twitch.tv slash waxfraud. We stream every single day, and feel free to join if you want to. These can all come up pretty quick, because the bones of the house are there. You just have to, you know, just build around it, make everything look nice, put some flowers up. We have the landscape crawling into the side of this house, and I believe I'm going to have some of the grass crawling into the side of this house, too. You know what? We should take some of these buttons out so I can put some lilacs in here. Looks like I missed one over here, so we have number five to do, but number four, we just got to get the lanterns down. Actually, wait, let's take these buttons, too. We can get some rose bushes in the side. Bing, bang, and then a boom and a bop. We'll put small overhangs in front of the doors and above all of the windows. A lot of these houses were the same exact structure except for the initial farmhouse, and we have this house right here, which we could change into something special. Let's just take out all these logs. Let's take the roof out too. Time for you to go, buddy. There are so many iron golems around at all times. I feel like I'm always about to accidentally slap one. I'm just got to be extra cautious. And I actually just realized right now that, wait, do I have trapdoors? I do have mangrove trapdoors. We need to put some mangrove trapdoors on the side of this building. Give it a little bit more color over here too. Okay, so that's looking much nicer. I'll keep the same basic shape of this house, but I think instead of using the cobblestone for the walls, we're going to use cobble deep slate. Just to try to switch it up a little bit, Mr. Librarian, you will have a roof over your head soon. One thing different I'd like to do to the frame is get one oak beam down the middle and we'll actually get these two wide on the windows. Slap the rest on the bottom and get all these stripped. And I haven't been sleeping, we have some phantoms coming in, but I do have an iron golem here to help. Hey, wait, whoa, hey, you didn't do anything, buddy. To be fair, I also didn't do anything. That guy needs to get away. Ah, I'm getting ambushed. And you're done. Now we can get back to the building. I'm going to make some stairs from the bricks and the regular stone, and we can get to the roof. We're going to use these blocks interchangeably. This roof is a little strange because it's an even amount of blocks, so I'm having a little bit of trouble trying to figure out. I don't think I've ever worked with an even amount of blocks before on a roof, so I'm going to use some trap doors, and maybe we can just finish it off by using a little bit of these stairs again. Bring some stairs out like this, and I'm wondering if two lanterns hanging is going to be the best option. We'll go one, two, and actually, okay, that's not too bad. It's always nice to try new things. I've used a lot of combos so far. We've got the acacia wood with the granite and the brick over there. We've got the spruce in the jungle and the dark oak over in the back. We've got the oak with the spruce. And on the other side down here, we just did jungle wood and some spruce. And then, of course, with the farmhouse, we did some dark oak and some spruce again. But we haven't used any bamboo planks yet, so let's get these up here on the roof. Slap some campfires down. We'll take all these out. Man, these bamboo stairs and bamboo planks actually look pretty good. I definitely need to start building with this wood type more often. I'm going to get the chimney moving right through here still. More spruce trap doors are going to get put up here in between all of these mangrove buttons. Now we have quite a bit of color on the roof, and if we walk around the side, we have a little bit of an awning here. Eventually, these paths are just going to line up to one another, but uh, for now, we don't have the slabs put in. We do have to focus on the interior of some of these places, though. Like, if we were to take out some of these original blocks and replace these with a scaffolding, now that already looks a lot nicer, and actually if we just take these out right here, we can actually shift the bed one this way, and actually take some oak trap doors and create a wall. We are going to need a spruce desk put in the corner. Whoa, okay, that's a thunderstorm. It's always raining. Let's sleep. Get a couple tulips on the inside, and we'll get a couple tulips on the outside. So just a couple extra pieces of decoration here. We're going to get some trap doors loaded up at the top and I think some note blocks here at the bottom and not too bad. Just a small amount of blocks will actually go a long way here. And you know what? I'm going to move the blast furnace right back in there. One of the villagers will take that blast furnace as a job block and I'm going to move slowly all of the rest of these into the houses. We already have a bunch of fishermen, so the barrel over here doesn't matter too much. We have quite a bit of barrels included in the builds already. The house right across the street, we can go ahead and put a barrel. Sir, get out of here. We already have a fisherman in here, but we can put a barrel right here, and then we can set up our little bedroom. These are going to be very fun to decorate. Take the cobblestone stairs out, and we'll get a nice wooden desk in. 
put some saplings and some flowers for some more color. We use some lightning rods for some decoration, and without any lighting from the torch, we can need some lanterns. Now this place is already looking much more cozy. I've also been enjoying just kind of randomizing these work blocks on the outside of the builds too. So now we have a couple more work blocks to get used up, and in this house there's not really- well there's a guy sleeping in here, but we don't have any work blocks, so we'll take the middle block out of the desk and we'll put a loom in. Now the villagers will just assume those work block positions and we'll just wait for them to do so. Run back into this house, let's slap a cauldron right down in the middle. Slap the cartography table down. Next on the list for me was the brewing stand here. So we got to get a cleric back in this town. We made him disappear when we took it away. So I think getting a brewing tower or a cleric trading hall right in the center of town, right next to this gate would work pretty well. A lot of the front side of town is already used up. And so I figured, you know, let's get a couple of builds, maybe one more house in the cleric trading hall right here. I think it'd be cool if the landscape was moving into the build just a little bit. So let's start with the build right here. We'll start off with a 9 by 11 foundation. And the back side's going to be much taller than the front. Right now I'm using only stone bricks, but I will work in the stone blocks. It's just a little bit faster for me to spam these. Start smacking a couple of these out of the wall. Now for a 5 by 5 square for the tower shape. I'm going to start using some cobblestone walls to go up the sides. Now we have a solid way of seeing where we can put all of these windows. Just got to take them out in between all the pillars. Feels good to finally have to need some scaffolding. We have a build that's finally tall enough to get some going. Now some stone brick stairs to enclose the 5x5 five five square. Give ourselves a small platform to stand on once we get to the roof. Then as promised, I need to make a way to get up there via ladder. I'm going to try to make this a little bit more interesting by putting a second layer here. Let's make the outside a little bit more exciting. I'm going to take some of these away and just add some slabs. Bing, bang, boom, and bop. We got some flowers outside on the windowsills before we actually get any of these glass panes in. We got the front door put in, and I decided to install two back doors just in case the villagers have any issues getting in. And I'm not going to put any ladders on the bottom shelf right there, or the bottom block, because I feel like they're just going to get stuck up on this second layer. But I will put the ladder going all the way up to the roof, and we're going to get this lit up here too. Put a lantern on all four sides just to make it extra bright. And now for some interior decoration, let's head down. We can put the brewing stand right in the middle, and let's get some desks right here. Got some acacia trap doors for some extra color. Let's get that plant down, and voila, we got ourselves a nice little room. This guy's just been staring at me. It's kind of strange. I'm going to get this, uh, this last trap door right here, and we'll get some lanterns hooked up on the outside. Taking a step back, I like this. It's, like, it's kind of like the original shape, but I think I'm forgetting this front balcony area. So right up here on the roof of this first room, if I jump up, I should be able to actually, yep, let's break this real quick. Bring our pickaxe out and break through, yep, okay, now we're gonna have a door. Cover this up with trap doors, and yep, okay, so this definitely doesn't even have a railing. Cover that up, get some stairs on the top. Now if I can hop around the corner here, I should be able to get this last lantern, boom, okay, there we go, now it's all lit up. We'll round out the corners up here. Now we can, I think that might have been the last step, and okay, you know what? I really like this. Very simple, yet very effective cleric trading hall. Now you may have noticed that I have actually started adding a small walkway slowly here that I can get up to via stairs next to the gates, or I can actually go into these deep slate towers. I can open the gate here that blocks the villagers from getting up, and then I can go to the tippy top here. These deep slate towers are really just not going to be much for function, though. I just, I don't really want the villagers to use them that much, but if the villagers want to make their way over to this staircase, they certainly can. I think that'd be pretty cool and more immersive. It only really needs to be two blocks wide the entire way, and actually if I get some jungle trap doors here for a nice railing, I think that'd look pretty nice. As we set these up all the way around, I'm actually thinking some spruce logs could actually go around where the corners are. It's going to leave a little bit less room for walking, but at least it'll give it some more structural integrity. I'm going to strip these down real quick and put a spruce trap door on the outside. Cover the bottom with them too. Now the beauty of the towers comes right here where I can just take a step back and look at what I've done and then I can pop through the build right here and we are at that exact same level. I'm debating on whether or not I should keep that. It is very convenient though. Drop down, get some more spruce logs in and strip, 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 strip. Couple more over here, get some logs going all the way. One, two, three, and four and strip, 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 strip. Jungle trap door here, jungle trap door there, everywhere a jungle trap door. These slabs are going to be a little difficult. I can put one right there on that level, but as far as the half layers go, I only can really put it right here, which doesn't really end up looking too bad. The only thing is, if you just want a higher up railing, you kind of just need to start stacking them up like this. Now, if we're running around the corner this way, we don't have to feel like we're about to fall off. 
Get you right here, you right there, and as far as the stairs go, we should probably do the same thing where we stack them up. Stack one, flip, stack two, flip, and stack three, flip, stack four, and flip. Maybe one on the bottom to start it off. Okay, this is cool. Now the town is breathing with life and all these buildings, and the wall is as well. And of course it's raining again. What we're gonna do now is I put a bunch of campfires on each of the corners, and I'm gonna load them up with some mangrove trap doors on the sides just to give the color a little bit of pop. Slap these down on the top, and in between these and the spruce trap doors, we're gonna get some birch buttons going. The place is really starting to come together. Just need a couple of these on the inside, and I'm noticing we have a blank space over here where I need to put the farm in, but let's get that taken care of right after we get these pathways lit up. All of the houses are now connected between these small paths that I would normally have in a regular village that I set up, but now I just need to have the lanterns everywhere. All of these guys are connected, but with no lights in between all of the paths. Let's take out the torches here for the temporary lighting and get some permanent lighting in. We have a deep slate tile wall, three oak fences, two spruce trap doors, and then we will drop down and use a lantern and that will create one lamppost. We'll use some lampposts to separate the paths over here on the hill where it gets a little messy and I think I'm gonna pop one up right over here too. Now we have a lot of those lanterns up around town. We can start to take out these torches, but first I really just wanna get this farm done. Right now it's only wheat, but we can make this a multi-crop system. I'm gonna separate each block with one spruce log Throw some polished andesite in between all of these. Take all of the old oak blocks out. Got all of the old weed out. I'm going to get it replaced. I'm going to throw some new dirt up in the corner. Start raising all of these spruce logs by one. Run them back home to grab a bunch of these carrots. I'm just going to move this carrot farm, actually. I don't, I don't really need these in front of the house anymore. Decided planting some trees in front of the gate, or what will be the gate, would be a good idea. Because I thought maybe just adding a path in between the trees would make it a little bit more immersive as well. This guy was escaping, and then as soon as I had the carrots, he followed me all the way in here. With all these lampposts at all the street corners and the pathways having just a little bit of color and decoration in them, it's all starting to come together. I'm going to put some carrots on this first row. Let's hoe down all the dirt. And we'll move all the water that's needed into the middle. I was thinking about making this half of a wheat farm, but we could move the wheat farm to the other corner of this village and just continue making this one giant carrot farm. Where there's no lanterns, I'm going to throw down some acacia trap doors. Now up on the other corner, I did the exact same thing where we run through the pathways and we can find ourselves at a nice little wheat field. It's not as big as the carrot farm, but this will do the job. I think the iron golem keep taking out some of these little dirt patches, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of that. Now we just need a shepherd to take care of some animals. We got to have some livestock in this village. Before we do that, I do have one more building that I need to finish decorating. I needed to make more decorated pots, and in order to do that, I had to go on a journey to find a lot more clay. Decorated pots are awesome, but they take a lot of clay. I'll slap some flowering azaleas right on top of those. I'm actually trying to figure out why I still have some scaffolding up here, and I believe it's because I didn't finish the roof, and actually it should be on the other side. There's one more camp, but yep, it's right here. How could I have forgotten that one? And there's one missing dark oak stair, okay. And what do you know, there's one dark oak stair in the double chest. Let's bring this back up. Okay, the roof should be completed. I'm going to finish the roofs by trading with the mason. I'm going to get a bunch of quartz for all the flags on top. But that is for a later time. We have some livestock to fence in. We have a wide open space in this corner, so I thought it would be perfect. We have some chickens and a cow here already. We have a lot of oak fence gates and a lot of oak fences left over from these builds, so I'm going to use them for the animal enclosure as well. Besides, I really do love the oak and the deep slate combo. Close this up right here, and I think we have one cow. Yep, we have one cow already stuck. I have a little bit of wheat to take some cows out of my personal farm, but I don't really have that many cows left. Yeah, as you can see right here, there's just not that many cows. I'm not really sure why. I, I, I don't really feel like I should take from here. I'm just, I'm running low on cows, so let's get a wild cow. There is plenty of wildlife. We might as well grab some sheep while we're out here, too. All right, single file now. All right, one at a time, man. Everybody in, let's go. Come on now. All right, now we officially have an animal enclosure. We can make some more cows. Let's make some more sheep. Now that the town looks a lot more cozy and a little bit more livable, it's a lot nicer to be here. One thing I'd like to focus on next is, and of course it's raining, but the one thing I'd like to focus on next is this gate area. It's looking a little bit plain, and I'd like the entrance to look just as detailed as the center of the village. The stairs over here, everything looks nice. I like up here so far, but the gate is looking plain, and so do these deep slate towers. I think I'm going to construct these to be just about maybe three blocks taller than they currently are, so let's just go up one, two, and three. Whoa! 
my god, why? Why is there so much lightning? Why is it always raining? I don't know any other hardcore world that rains this much. We used only deep slate tiles so far, so I'm gonna line this top layer with some deep slate bricks. Under this, we'll drop down and we'll use some stairs to make it look like it has some more structural integrity. Then we stagger the top to give it a castle effect. Okay, that is a cool castle effect. I do like that. We just need to add that to all of the 12 towers on the side. But in order to light up the corners, I feel like just a chain, maybe two chains and a lantern will do. Wait, I'm going to one-up myself. Let's use a cobbled deep slate wall right there. Okay, perfect. We'll actually just take out two blocks with some slabs on each side and a spruce stair in the middle. Break some windows out over here as well. Okay, did not mean to break the lantern. Get that broken, and where's the lantern at? We'll get this hung right back up. We'll get the glass panes in for the window, a fern on the bottom, and you know what? We'll get an azalea right at the top. Close this off with some spruce trapdoors on that side, and over on this side too. Got our last window made right here, and a couple extra blocks to grab from the ground. These are not looking too bad, except we actually did miss some lighting right here. I have some slabs on me. We'll throw one right here, and one right here. Do I have any fences? I do. Throw the fences up, and the lanterns, and we got this lit. This chicken doesn't necessarily belong, but I guess he can stay. The iron golems are starting to spawn outside of the village now, which is a little strange, but I guess it is what it is. Let's run up the stairs. I'd like to get into one of these center towers. All of them are decorated and lit on the inside. Nothing should be spawning in there, and none of the villagers should be able to get up because of the fence gates. But if we crawl to the middle, we have a nice lantern in the middle. The acacia trap doors are a nice little accent on the edges. And all of the towers should be lit up with all of the lanterns, except... Actually, I see over here, there's no acacia trap doors. I'm always forgetting something. I believe this right here should be the final touch to the towers, and okay, now we are looking fortified. All I gotta do is lay down a couple of these azaleas it looks like I missed. I believe I missed some on, yep, right here as well. Scaffold up real quick. We got a plant right there and a plant right there. Looks like I also didn't even put any slabs right here, so I'm glad I came back over. Oh my god, why are why are all these Okay, everybody out. Everybody get out. You're you don't need you guys don't need to be in here. Only for the cows, the sheep, and the chickens. Everybody out. Single file now. Come on, guys. Why are you guys in there? I don't even know how they got in. The towers really bring the village all together, but what I'm thinking is on the side, I laid down some moss. I want to put some birch trap doors up against here. I'm gonna lay all of these up. Then we're gonna put some azaleas in here on the wall just to make it look a little bit nicer. So many trap doors. But the moss does look pretty nice as a wall accent. And continuously flipping trap doors is pretty fun. But now at the center of the village, we've actually reached a point. There is a pond we can get done here, but that's actually pretty easy. Now we just need to tackle something that I haven't tackled ever really before. Let's take this center tree down. We need to make a first custom tree. But right now, I'm just going to lay one right here in the center. Man, that is always so much louder than I ever expect. And we'll lay one over here next to the animals right here. Actually, I'm thinking these are way too close together. Let's take this bell and run all the way on the other side of town, across the pond, maybe closer to the farmer's house that we had originally made, and put this guy just right here. That's strange. It was under the tree somehow, but I guess it is what it is. Let's, uh, let's grab some of these oak leaves to help recreate the tree. I am going to start right here, though. Let's just go up about seven or eight. I want to start making some branches, so let's go out this way just a little bit, and over on this side we can move up, but even one more, just a little bit higher. Bear with me, guys. I've never made a custom tree before. I guess we'll just start spamming some leaves. I'm really hoping this ends up looking good. I'm going to use some flowering azalea leaves mixed in here as well. We got something coming together so far. It's looking a little flowery on that side. Let's go under here. Get some randomized oak logs on each side with some slabs so no villagers can start climbing. Get some slabs under the tree over here, too. I got an oak fence in there, but I want to get some more oak fences. We start bringing the branches down like this. It kind of reminds me of a weeping willow tree. It's kind of beautiful when they start kind of flowing off of each other. And I have a feeling I'm about to get very addicted to custom tree building. There's a couple things that I'd like to get in the tree. And first thing I would like to get in there was some big looking fruit. And I thought some raw blocks of copper looked cool. I'm even throwing a couple oak fence gates up in here to get things randomized. The tree is looking a lot more full. I just want to hang a couple of lanterns to give this tree a little bit of life on the ground. Sometimes the tree looks a little bit more full when there are some moss blocks added in here, too. Okay, so I believe I beefed it up enough up here. I'm just going to check it out from a side view. And okay, we have... Okay, I like this a lot. We have our first custom tree. I'm definitely feeling like I'm going to get better at it as time goes on, and I want to get better at it, which is why I'm going to keep on doing it. But for right now, I feel like this is not too bad for a first tree. 
We have a nice side view over here on the bridge on the fortification wall. And man, this is looking nice and cozy. I'm loving having this custom tree. But right here, we could have a custom pond, but we don't really have anything yet. Let's, uh, let's get some mossy cobblestone slabs mixed in with some regular cobblestone slabs. Take out some dirt, throw you in, and more slabbage. Start mixing in some of the mossy slabs into the water here. Just to give it a little bit more texture, I'm going to move some of these polished andesite blocks in, as well as a little bit of this gravel. We need way more sea pickles for these ponds, so I'm going to get this bone meal going. Actually, we should be getting good. That was a lot right there already. Got some water source blocks around the edge. Let's get some sea pickles going on there. And that is not a source block. Let's make it one. Make this place just a little bit deeper. I think this will be a nice temporary home for the ags levels that we found earlier. Let's actually get you in. Let's get you in. And wait, we have one and two more. Let's get you in right here, sir, and you in right there. Perfect. Okay, so now we can bone meal up just a little bit so these guys have a little bit of foliage. Also, if you guys want to have these axolotls named after yourself in the Twitch chat, make sure to come by anytime. These small drip leaves on the outside look absolutely stunning. And it's fun adding the big drip leaves every once in a while, but I like adding them at different heights. Then we can add some actual flowers for some extra color around the sides. Almost forgot to add the spore blossom to this tree for major ambiance, and also the kelp at the bottom here so we can get some extra ambiance down under the water. Now the axolotls have some foliage to swim through too. Perfect, this pond is looking nice and cozy. It is missing a dock, however. I think right here might actually be perfect. Let's take some of this out, some of that out. This really only needs to be about one block across. I'm just going to make some spruce trap doors come out like this. And, you know, this is less of a dock and more of a diving board. Take that guy out. And not too bad. We have a little bit of space out here to watch the axolotl swim. Now this place is really coming together. Let's take out the scaffolding. There's one place that I really haven't focused on, and that is the front entrance and the back entrance over here that's leading to the house. So if we run over here real quick, I just want to add more details in between here. Maybe get a little bit of an arch going, but I might need to go mine for some more deep slate. Or instead of using deep slate, we use these stone bricks that we have been using. And I'm going to actually incorporate a little bit of the andesite in here as well. We'll bring these over by two, get that stair going right there, and one, two, three, four, five. If we drop down, that is not too bad. Now we're just going to bring everything up and over by one block. This is going to add a little bit more depth. We'll do the same thing to the back side. One, two, three, four, and hop down. Okay, that looks much cooler. Hop up here real quick. I kind of wanted to get some stairs to round off the edges and see what this looks like. We'll hop down. I think this arch actually was a little bit easier than I thought it was going to be. That's not too bad at all. This series is nice. I've already been working with a lot of types of architectural designs that I really never work with. Get this guy down in the corner, and okay, dude, I think we've done it. Now we just need some walls and a few oak fence gates to top that off. Not too bad at all. Let's get this here. Maybe some lanterns could go here. Actually, you know what? Sometimes simpler is better. Let's just keep all of the oak fences out and we'll just put a lantern there and a lantern. Wait, hold on. And a lantern right here and voila. Something we could do though is hop up here and get a lantern hanging from both sides right there and right there. And just for the gates, I'm going to slap a lantern right in the middle down there. We'll get one right on top of these cobblestone walls. And if I hop down here, boom. Now there's a couple things to clean up. I want to make a couple places for these villagers to hang out. So I'm going to get some campfires loaded up, stairs on every side, and we'll coat these with some dark oak trap doors. If you add a bunch of these around town and get a bunch of these wells around the pass, it adds a nice amount of texture. Over here is looking a little dark, though. It does look like I forgot to put a bunch of lanterns in, which is not good because creepers, zombies, skeletons, anything like that could spawn. It'd be cool if this place was completely mob-proof. We've got a couple extra job blocks around town just in case these guys run out of job blocks in the houses. We've got to take out the random torches that are around town. We'll add some random grindstones near the entrance. And also back here, this is an area where it's not necessarily a place where the villagers can go yet, but we could open it up right now if they want to. There's not really anywhere they can go once they leave. There's an island over here, and I guess if they wanted to walk across the water, they could. We're just going to close it up like that, and now these guys cannot leave. Just spotted out of my peripheral. Okay, yeah, there's a bunch of birch trap doors back here that were not placed. Let's get these all back here. Get these all flipped up, and okay, one, two, three, four, we have a wall. It's crazy looking back in this hallway. I wanted even the negative spaces to have a little bit of light. Seems like this area is just a little bit low on light. I'm gonna get a couple more lanterns around. The second pond over here is looking nice. I'm gonna start filling it up with tropical fish that I come across. Next thing on my list, I'd like to get a bunch of flowers in here, and we also need to trade for that quartz, so I think we could kill two birds with one stone by going to the raid farm to get some Hero of the Village real fast. 
I decided to build a staircase right here so I could easily get in and out of the bridge on the fortification wall on the side because I only used to be able to enter through that gate over there and the gate on the front side. Also, I'm pretty sure I keep switching the names between the front side and the back side. They can both be the front side and the back side, though. Let's, uh, let's head out to the raid farm. And you know what? While we're out here, we're going to be going to the flower forest, so might as well grab as much as we can and bring it back to the village to get it decorated. And we have arrived at the shore of the flower forest. I'll be picking a lot of you guys up on the way back home. We just have one quick pit stop at the raid farm. Let's go find a captain. I hear a lot of dudes. We have a lot of them right here, but no captain. And when you finally find a captain, you can get the raid going. Dude, these evokers are so fast. They're so speedy quick. Look at him go. Looks like we just need one more. Oh, never mind. There he is. I think that is it. And we got Hero of the Village. Okay, perfect. We can run back. And yeah, as you guys can see, it doesn't look the nicest down here. But uh, I think a YouTube stream or maybe a couple of Twitch streams should get that taken care of. Okay, I'm going to get every type of flower that I can real quick. Just We don't need like a stack of all of them, but I'm just going to grab a lot more than I currently have. Oxid daisies over here. Get more corn flowers over here too. Every single color of tulip. You're coming with me. I'll take all the big boys home too. Right now I'm declaring it a goal. I would like to come back here. I want to turn this flower forest into the best flower forest that anyone's ever seen. I took a lot of flowers from it from right now, but I'm going to come back and I'm going to bring a lot more. Okay, and popping around the mountainside. Look at all of these towers. They look so pronounced in this area. Looks like I forgot to get some azaleas and ferns up there, but it's okay. We have plenty of planting to do right now. Let's hop through the gate, and if I can make it through, there we go. All right, let's get these tulips everywhere. Get some tulips over here, get some tulips over here. We'll hop around the pond, get some tulips over this way. The little flowers are nice, but I feel like these rose bushes, the peonies, and the lilacs, these are the guys that really bring the most color out, because these are just, they're so tall. Looks like this iron golem has just spawned back here, and he's stuck for eternity. Sorry, buddy, but I don't, I don't think I can get you out. Looks like I forgot a lot of the plants up on the cleric trading hall. Let's hop up here real fast. Literally, I think all of the plant pots don't have a plant in them. How did I manage to do that? Even the ones inside don't have plants in them. What did I do? Aha, there we go. I see some ferns that... Oh, and I fell. I'm trying to run up here because I also need to get all of these birch doors in the tower. Throw the fern up there. We can jump over here. We got a fern right here. And I believe on the other side where you at fern... Oh, and I fell again. Well, I'm glad I fell because I noticed over here I didn't put any ferns over here. And also, there's no more birch doors here or here. So many small details I'm missing. Also, the glass panes for all these windows. I don't know how I let that happen, but uh, let's get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Yeah, these look much nicer already. Now let's run back inside. I have a small stash of clay that we can use to sell. Now I just have to find the stonemason throughout all of these parts. There's a couple of stone cutters throughout town. Maybe he's just in here, but he is not home, so maybe... Oh, wait, he is right here. Hold up, buddy. Let's sell you some clay. Thank you very much, and I'd like to buy these blocks of quartz. And I will turn these into slabs real fast so that I can make some flags. Seems like these trapdoors are making this guy get stuck. I'm going to take this out for right now so that he can at least re-up his trade. And he's getting stuck on this one now. He really wants me to take these down. And now we can climb up on one of our roofs. Let's start right over here. Let's get up here with the scaffolding. And now we just need to get these up on the roofs. Let's jump over. Okay, perfect. Let's get the flag up here. Now we just need to get these flags repeated on every roof. And if I can just stop falling and go over here and go boom. Okay, we got a flag right there. Looks like the sun is coming up over the ice spikes. Let's get the last part of the flag right there. Okay, I think that might be the last one. If I see any other flags that need to go up, I'll definitely put them there. But for now, let's get some random decorations here around town. This little combination of scaffolding, barrel, and levers, just a little place for villagers can drink from. Now, walking through this place, I want to make sure that I'm not missing any details. Like, right over here, there's some missing acacia saplings. Let's run back home, past Paul and Pablo. What's good, guys? How you doing? I didn't even say what's up to them the whole episode. We'll run back with the acacia saplings, and actually, you know what? Now we have this village made, we could actually set these first librarians free. Looks like we've actually caught a couple of these villagers. You know what? Let's let, let's let you guys go, and uh, let's let you guys choose. If you want to go to the house, you can go to the house. If you want to go back to your village, you can most certainly go back. This guy is getting very close and personal. It looks like most of them are just wandering right over to the house. 
We gotta keep this nitwit safe though for the nitwit sanctuary. And now we finally have a little bit of a clean pathway that leads all the way from the house over to this giant village. Take a turn past the minuscule cow population that we have going on. We definitely need a lot more of those, but now we have the front gates that we can open and explore. If we just walk straight, we'll go right under the custom tree, and this is kind of the town center. I love that we have a house with multiple job blocks right here, so I feel like a lot of villagers are running in and out of this one. And across the street, we have the little fisherman's house. Running up the hill, we have the small stonemason house. And across the street from the stonemason, we have another identical house. In the far back where this farm is, we do have another identical house, but all of them are just slightly different with the interior decoration on the inside. And I need to hop all the way around town over here next to the water troughs. I have a couple acacia saplings that are missing. Let's get the chains right here and let's get the flower pots right. Boom and boom. And then we can get the acacia saplings right here. Even the negative space has a bunch of flowers and a lot of color. Now with a little bit of extra time on our hands, we can take some of these decorated pots, throw a pot into them, and put some saplings on top. If you walk in from this way, and by the way, this path is going to lead through these cherry trees to another build eventually. But if this is the entrance we're going to use, the first thing you're going to see is this little cleric trading hall. Take a right to see the buildings that we just toured, or you can take a left to see this pond over here. We can go see the other pond. We have the carrot farm behind all of these wells, and we also have the original farmer's house that I had created. Back all the way over here, this is exactly where the village started. I think my favorite thing about this village, though, is the fact that we can hop up from any of these towers, open up the door, pass this gate, and walk through the second door, and voila, we are on the bridge that gives us a much better view of the town. It is cool because we can jump up from there, and now we can get up on this tree and get a giant view from the town. Also, it's kind of cool that we can patrol this bridge as if we are the guardian of this village. Maybe some plants along this wall would be cool now that I'm walking along and I'm going to be patrolling up here, you know, maybe something nice to look at would be cool. More acacia saplings never hurt anybody anyways. But guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. I really do appreciate it. I know these episodes are a lot longer than they usually used to be, but I think I'm going to keep it this direction. I am very much enjoying making these very long videos. They're usually over an hour long, but I mean, I'm just, I'm really enjoying it. And so I really hope you guys are too. And again, thank you guys to all the Twitch subscribers, Patreon supporters, and YouTube members. There are going to be plenty of upcoming streams, so be on the lookout for those. All of the notifications are going to be in the Discord. And also be on the lookout for a bunch of custom trees. They are definitely on the way. But again, that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate y'all. Remember to take care of yourselves, do something nice for somebody, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!